थैंक यू गुड इवनिंग नमस्ते जय तेलंगाना अंदर की नमस्ते आई थैंक प्रोफेसर संजय जैन जी एंड सनम फॉर फैसिलिटेटिंग दिस इवेंट वेरी वेरी हैप्पी एंड वेरी प्राउड टू बी हियर इट्स एन ऑनर इन फैक्ट टू बी एबल टू टॉक अबाउट माय स्टेट इन अ प्रेस्टिजियस इंस्टीट्यूशन लाइक ऑक्सफर्ड स्पेशली इन अ डिपार्टमेंट वेयर डेवलपमेंटल इकोनॉमिक्स इज डिस्कस्ड ऑफ द वेरियस नेशंस सो आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी हियर टू बी प्रेजेंटिंग टूडे एंड एज ऑल ऑफ अस नो ऑक्सफर्ड इज अ वेरी एज ओल्ड इंस्टीट्यूट व्हिच इज इंस्टीट्यूशन व्हिच इज रेप्यूटेड अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड फॉर इट्स रिसर्च एंड वेरी हैप्पी टू बी हियर बिकॉज when i speak about telangana when i speak about development in fact we, me and uh, professor were having a off the record chat just right now and talking about why why do we only talk about uh, developing nations why not compare it with the developed nations etc so there's a lot of theories about it but practically what i have seen uh, in telangana i think there's a lot of weight and that can be discussed the model can be discussed across the nation that is the hope and aspiration that i came here with otherwise it's a very busy time in elections but i took out some time to come here to make sure that if at all this model and the strategies that we applied for the ground path breaking uh, development that we have done in telangana in a very small time if that can be discussed i think my one day travel is totally worth it so uh, first of all very happy to be here and when i am here abroad i believe i not only represent my state but i represent the country and uh, india which has a very very rich history of uh, cradling a lot of luminaries from lord buddha to jyoti baba phule to dr ambedkar to rabindranath tagore to jhansi lakshmi bai uh, mahatma gandhi we can talk about nagarjuna who's propagated his uh, shunyavada philosophy across the world we can talk about aryabhata who has contributed a great deal to the world mathematics so uh, when we think about all these great people that our nation has produced really feel proud to be representing india here uh, very happy very uh, that we are able to continue the legacy of both that enlightenment and that innovation that our luminaries have given us i just hope we can walk on their path in a uh, and make them proud and when we think about the luminaries from india we cannot but ignore um, chanakya <coughs> his chanakya his policies his uh, theory is uh, known as chanakya niti who spoke of governance for the welfare of the people and society sometimes it's used in a negative connotation but when taken in a right sense it speaks about the welfare of the people and society and especially his ardhashastra that provides timeless insights into the responsibilities of a statesman a guide post i think that echoes in the visionary leadership of our telangana chief minister k chandrashekar rao also uh, we call him ksr very fondly so here on i'll refer to him as ksr and uh, today i'm uh, sincerely both humbled and also honored to stand before you at the prestigious university of oxford mm-hmm. to share the journey of my homeland uh, telangana and how collectively the vision of our people of telangana uh, under the leadership of ksr has set a model for a most integrated inclusive and equitable development i mean many many people dream about equitable development we saw it happening and that's that's uh, a proud moment for me i will try and attempt to talk about how telangana was formed and then talk about what were the issues that were um, the most uh, important uh, challenges and how we went on to address it well telangana is a long fought journey uh, although the state was formed in 2014 in june 2nd uh, it was a five decade long fight uh, we were a separate state called hyderabad state we existed as a separate state even after indian independence until 1956 and we were a prosperous state we were doing good but then in 1956 a conditional and a forcible merger happened with our neighboring andhra pradesh um, then of course since then somehow the uh, merger was never happy uh, you know made anybody happy we were constantly struggling we were constantly raking up the demand of a separate statehood uh, that kind of uh, led to a very inequitable uh, development we've always had this grouse that we did not get our share and we constantly started raising the issue Uh, but then of course in 2001 uh, 
Honorable KCR had uh, given a proposal uh, to the people of Telangana that why don't we fight in a very peaceful but a political battle to make sure the statehood is achieved. People have blessed him, people have stood with him and we fought under his leadership for from 2001. And of course, um, uh, the central government at that point of time or the party was aspiring to be uh, coming back to power at that point of time. They promised to support this demand for the first time. So in 2004, it was for the first time ever that uh, central government acknowledged that the demand for Telangana state exists and they agreed and they put it in the common minimum program. But then of course, after the elections, they chose to uh, disregard the demand. They chose to, they reneged back on their word and uh, they shattered the hopes of uh, people of Telangana. So KCR had to come out, then go on to the fast until death in 2009. Then the announcement of Telangana had happened. Uh, well, the separate statehood movement uh, was full of flip-flops from 2009 until 14. Also, we were constantly seeing this turmoil happening. But finally, in 2014, June 2nd, the state was formed. So this is exactly nine and a half years back. And when we look back in nine and a half years, how was Telangana? Because I was just talking to, uh, interacting with uh, people here and uh, she was very happy. I sorry, I don't know your name. Sahish Navi was very happy that she visited Hyderabad and she's seen unprecedented growth. But in 2014, that was not the story. In 2014, the story was out of 10 districts of the state, nine were declared backward by the central government. Two districts, Kammam and Mahbub Nagar, were categorized as the most hungry in the country. And the agriculture and allied sector, which supported around 46% of the population of the state, it was under severe distress and the farmer suicides were number two in the country. Uh, it was very unfortunate, but that was the state of affairs. And we were a severely power distressed state. The shortage of power was around 2700 megawatts, which ultimately led to a power cut of about four to eight hours across the state. And that resulted in uh, industries being shut at least for two days in a week. So they could operate in shifts. And um, neither we had in uh, adequate surface water for irrigation, nor did we have enough uh, water for the um, drinking water. Also, of course, when your whole nine districts are backward, revenue of the state was in shambles. So that was the situation in 2014, and that was the situation in which we inherited uh, the state. But then what did we do? How did we change that situation from being a power deficit state, from being a state which had no drinking water, from being a state which had no irrigation water, now to a power surplus state, now to a state where we are number two in paddy production. How did that transformation happen? And that is the story I'm here to share with all of you. And uh, the leader, KCR, um, he was an agitator. He was constantly agitating for the state. He has a very sharp wit and a sharp tongue. So he'd never spared anybody. Uh, during the agitation. So people did have this fear that what will happen once the Telangana state is formed? How will the rest of the Hyderabad, rest of the people will be taken care of? But what I've seen uh, for any society to transform, the prerequisite is that the leader of that state should understand how to convert his negativities into positivities. And I've seen that change happening in my own leader. Overnight, from an agitator, he became an administrator. He made a statement saying everybody is equal to me. He made a straight, he stopped using sharp words. He worked in silence. He worked with strategy, which he was always known for. And he worked with commitment and dedication. I think that is a prerequisite uh, that, you know, uh, undertook this paradigm shift. And of course, I'm, I am very well aware that I am standing in the Department of Economics, so I can't be giving flowery speeches. I should throw in some hard numbers at you. So I will do that too. Uh, but I'll have to tell you that from 2014, the, the careful balance of government spending, both in uh, investing in infrastructure and also welfare, I think that took the state to the next level. So when we talk about the growth of Telangana in the last nine and a half years, the average of Indian GDP, when you look at all the nine years is, 118, 118.2% in the last 10 years from 2014-15 to 2022-23. Whereas the Telangana average is 155.7%. Uh, that's the increase of uh, GSDP. So we always grew over the national average in the last uh, 
So our contribution of Telangana state to the central's GDP grew from 4.1% in 2014 to 4.9% now in 2022 23 But then the population was constant. It's 29 since 2014 till date. So that being constant, this contribution to GDP is the actual wealth or the contribution of my state to the country. Well, um, other than that, of course, uh, economists, take, economists take seriously the per capita income of any uh, nation or state. So in 2014-15, uh, we were at 1,12,162. Now, this year, we are at 3,17,115. So we have literally doubled the per capita income of our people. And this is in less than 10 years. But then see, per capita income also at times can be deceiving because growth could be stagnated in few people's hands and not everybody probably gets a benefit of the growth. So there is a concept called as Gini coefficient. The lower it is, the better it is for the people. The lower it is, that means everybody gets enough share of the income. Uh, I'm very proud to tell you that my state, Telangana, ranks number one amongst all states in terms of equitable income distribution. And our Gini coefficient is 0 0.10, which is literally which is literally on par with the nordic nations or even better than most of them so this this is the thing that makes us all happy the poorest of the poor is getting the benefit everybody is getting the benefit and uh, how did we achieve this my personal love and uh, uh, india is an agrarian nation we have to understand the fact any investment that we make has to be in agriculture it cannot be ignored that factor is taken very seriously in Telangana. 46% of our population is into agriculture. So we've made very, very serious investments in agriculture. In 2014, when we started, our agriculture growth was minus. It was minus 0.7%. And now, when you look at 2023, it is 37% in positive. So we have grown leaps and bounds in agriculture. And agriculture allied sectors, it could be dairy, fisheries, meat, uh, poultry, etc. That we have grown by 13.3%. That was also negative, but we've grown now. And the best part is even during COVID, we've kept on growing at 15.7%. And this is primarily because government intervened and procured every last grain of the crop or the yield that the farmers got. So they didn't have to go around trying to sell it, but the government purchased it. And that is how the farmers got the money. And when we talk about agriculture, as, as usual, most of the economists don't agree. I believe economists, most of them are very elitist. When somebody wants to give an incentive to a person who is investing 2,000 crores in a company, that is fine. But when a government wants to offer an incentive to a farmer with two acre land, that is somehow looked down upon. But in Telangana, we've decided to hold the hand of the farmer from the tilling of the soil to the yield of the crop. So even before they start tilling the land, we give them investment incentives. And I'm very proud to tell you that 10,000 rupees investment that we give per acre per farmer every year, till date in the last nine and a half years, 72,815 crores was directly given to 65 lakh farmers of Telangana. So this was the, this was the first step to make sure the farmer does not walk into the debt trap. So private debt is usually taken before they start tilling the soil. That is when the government intervenes and gives the money. Then when you uh, look at every process, the quality of the seeds, Telangana is the only state which actually puts a PD Act uh, preventive detention cases if somebody sells spurious seeds. It was a serious issue during uh, before Telangana state formation and we've controlled it. So quality seeds we give, timely availability of fertilizers to the farmers we give. And of course, surface water for irrigation is given. And I'm very proud to tell you today that we are the only state or probably we are the only government across the world which gives free water. There is no water cess on the irrigation water to the farmers. And we also give 24 hours free electricity. That again is there nowhere in any country. There is subsidized electricity for agriculture. But Telangana is the only government which gives free electricity, 24 hours free electricity to the farmers. So the farmer is now secure. He understands that he's going to get free electricity, free water, in time quality seeds, in time quality fertilizers, 
before he tills the soil, he knows that he'll get the investment input from the government. He doesn't have to go for a private debt. So the farming is done in a much more secured manner. The most important thing, other than all of these factors, is a farmer who has a one acre land or a two acre land or a half acre land. Earlier also had the land in his name, but the records were never clear. In India, in many of the states, it is still the issue. So if a farmer has to go for, raise a loan for anything, for a child's education or for some personal use, banks will not give him loan. Despite having a land, he will never get a loan. But the biggest revolutionary step Telangana government has taken up, we've introduced blockchain technology to map the land holdings of each and every farmer. And today, I'm very proud to tell you, 98 to 99% of all the farmland records are cleaned up and properly digitized by the government. And it is only with the fingerprint of the farmer that the records can be changed. So nobody can mess with your record and there is a sense of security to the farmer and the banks also can give loan to him. So he has access to additional finance if he wants to. So this sense of security net that we provided the farmer, I believe is what led for the exceptional uh, growth in the agriculture sector in Telangana. And of course, other than that, um, there are around 45,000 uh, 45, ponds in Telangana, which the government systematically invested and repaid using a scheme called Mission Kakatiya. And then we've linked all these ponds with the major irrigation canals that we built. So the ponds are full of water 365 days in a year. So in, a, in the staunchest of the summer today, you can go to any Telangana village blindly. You'll see the pond is full of water. And that has led to increase in the water table, increase in fisheries farming, which is again supporting the rural livelihood. And of course, it is supporting the farming activity as well. So check dams, minor irrigation projects con constructed, canals repaired. And the magic uh, out of all of this is, we managed to construct the world's largest lift irrigation scheme within three and a half years of time. That is the largest and biggest achievement. The moment this lift irrigation scheme is built, we got 73 lakh acres of land connected to the irrigation system in the state. So 73 lakh acres earlier, before the Telangana state formation, for them to get one crop in a year was an aspiration, was a dream. But today I'm so proud and so happy for my farmers because they can get three crops, not one, but three crops. And that is why with a systematic, um, uh, I'll, I'll just throw one number at you for your interest. Overall, before the state formation, from 2004 to 14, those governments, whoever was there, irrespective of the parties, those governments, the investment that they made in agriculture was 7,994 uh, 7, crores. But Telangana government in the last nine and a half years, we invested 1,91,612 crores in agriculture. So a policy, however powerful it could be, however positive it could be, if it is not backed up by your purse, the purse of the government, it is not going to work. So that is what Telangana government did. We framed powerful policies. We framed good policies which will help the people, but then backed it up by the finance. So the outlay and the way to spend it, that management, that efficiency in the governance, that is what set us apart and that is what today gave the results. As a result, now the area under cultivate, cultivation increased from 1.31 lakh acres to two crores uh, because it's consecutive seasons we are talking about. That's why the number will be double. And of course, the paddy production increased from 68 lakhs to two crores uh, metric tons in uh, next slide, please, in 2021. So we are today the highest, second highest, so this is two crores. So we are today the second highest uh, paddy producing state in the country. We are only competing with Punjab. Where are you, Sanam? We are competing with Punjab. So, and then of course today irrigation facilities, as I said, are available to 73 lakh acres. But then next time, once the Palamur lift irrigation scheme is done, then we will be able to connect 50 lakh more acres to that network. And once that is done, you can imagine what Telangana is going to grow. Nothing short of gold. So one other important thing that we did, whatever revenue came to the government, we used it in a very 
positive way to make sure the cycle of prosperity continues to make sure that the multiplier effect of the investment is properly taken care of. So in 20, 2014, our budget was 62,000 crores. Now it has grown to 2,94,000 crores. And that is again made systematically invested into various projects, starting from drinking water, in which we invested 36,000 crores to make sure that every household in Telangana is connected. So most of us who have faced the power cuts, we know the problem and the pain and why we don't want to go to the villages in Telangana. But then that has transformed now because Telangana government has very systematically invested 38,000 crores in the last nine and a half years to make sure that our power production capabilities increased. Huh, this one. So our power production when 2014 we started, we could only produce 7,778 megawatts of power. But now we are producing 18,453 megawatts of power. And of course, we are focused on renewable energy as well. So in 2014, we only had 74 megawatts of renewable power. Now we are able to produce 5,741 megawatts of power. And with the industrial growth, our per capita power consumption, this number has grown to 2126 uh, units. So that is highest in the nation and also almost equal to most of the developed nations. Uh, that is an indication that industry is doing well, most of the um, individuals are doing well. So that is one of the international indicators and I'm very happy that Telangana got there. And then when we look at the environmental challenges, world over we are conscious that the world's biggest challenge in terms of climate change is taking collective responsibility. And people and Telangana government are aware of this. And we have systematically again invested 10,000 crores in a program called Telangana Ku Haritaharam, where we planted saplings, 280 crore saplings. And we made sure we fenced our forests. We made sure we thickened our forests. We made sure, in fact, when they plant saplings in the villages, incentives of watering the plants of like two rupees, two and a half rupees also is given in the villages. And we should be very proud, Telangana is the only state, probably in the world, where in every village you find a government nursery, which is there, and a park that is built by the government. It is a must and should. Every Telangana village, all the 13,000 villages, you go anywhere that is available. So that is how we have increased our forest cover at by 7.7% with a very, very systematic drive of this. Uh, and investment. And when I look at problems like California, where they don't have water, I feel, why don't they invest? You know, they can make policies, they can invest. And this is this is why I was very excited to come to Oxford, because anything that is discussed here can go world over. And if somebody draws inspiration from this model, I think it will help uh, people across the world. And uh, speaking of the industry, this is again very important, because uh, not only farming, not only upskilling, but we need to create wealth in order to take care of the poorest of the poor. We need to create wealth. And the wealth creation today, services sector, industry sector, it is very important to make sure that industries feel welcome in Telangana. We came up with a policy, TSI pass, and this policy um, is very empowering, not only our people, but also industry. For example, if I'm coming here from UK, I want to invest in Telangana, you apply for a permission, Within 15 days, if I can't give you permission, then you have every right to open your company, you can start operating. Because by law, if you do not receive the government permission within 15 days, you have we have made it a statutory right to go ahead and commence the work. And this has really inspired a lot of companies. Many of them have come to Hyderabad, Telangana, they've invested. And I'll throw some numbers at you. From 2014 till 2023, January, 22,000, 22,000, um, yeah, 22,100 industrial units were given permission. Almost all of them have started operations and the investment worth 3,31,000 crores that is close to USD 40 billion is what a small young state like Telangana could attract. And the jobs created, these are direct jobs I'm talking about, or 22,36,000. There will be more than that indirect jobs that will be created and of course the activity that brings and the cities they build 
that is that is a growth that you actually see and perceive when you visit telangana and of course it we've progressed leaps and bounds uh, the it exports in 2014 were 57000 crores today we are at 183000 crores top 5 it companies apple google uh, microsoft facebook amazon four of them came to hyderabad after telangana formation and after the tsi pass was rolled out so that clearly is a success of the policy and also clearly a success of a visionary leader like ksr garu and of course one other thing that might interest you professor jain we are the only government uh, probably which has a government led incubator which can accommodate about 4000 startups at any point of time we have t hub 1 and 2 and of course we have a exclusive women on a women incubator it's called we hub that is again government led government supported government mentored so access to finance training mentorship is also all taken care by the government this is also very unique and nowhere across the globe you see that and of course uh, not only making sharp policies our leader is a person not only with the highest iq but he has the highest eq as well so he thinks with his heart i would say that because also i am his daughter i understand how he thinks um he has a very sharp intellect but when he sees a humanitarian situation he will not think about anything he'll directly jump into it for example i'll tell you one day we were just discussing uh, i i had received an application of a person who is suffering with elephantiasis where one leg gets very fat they can't move uh, it is a disease uh, but then that person kind of cannot move out of the house and not work i just asked our leader that this is a situation how can we help them with one pen stroke immediately 80000 such people across the state started getting pension from that very day and moment so that is the emotions with which our government works and we are probably the only government where unfortunately if somebody passes away in a government hospital we have a special vehicle to transport the dead body from the government hospital to the village to the doorstep of a person it's a special vehicle that is there it's a special drive and another thing um, this is again Uh, my leader's brainchild pregnant women across telangana institutional delivery was missing so to make sure that they come to the government hospitals to make sure that the delivery happens institutionally we've uh, designed a program where the healthcare worker literally brings the pregnant women for every checkup in a government ambulance to the hospital takes them back drops them at home i'm sure this does not even happen in uk where we know and understand you know um, one of the best healthcare systems in the world but the way we take care of our pregnant women nowhere else in the world anybody takes care of them because my district magistrate my collector sits in his office on his dashboard he knows how many deliveries are happening today in the government hospital so that is the kind of uh, uh, you know work that is happening in telangana and during covid i should make a special mention so when we knew that covid was hitting and transport is becoming difficult so we mapped out all the women who were going to be delivered in 15 days and then we brought them into the hospitals put them in so safe zones made sure the delivery happened institutionally and then sent the mother and the baby home very safely so these are the kind of disruptive um positively disruptive interventions that this government is taking care of and i'll just give you one more example and this again with one pen stroke my leader could have make it happen uh telangana was a parched state we did not have enough drinking water it was a dry region there was a lot of fluoride issues happening in many many districts so many people suffered with kidney diseases there were there are still a lot of dialysis patients in telangana but in the combined andhra pradesh until 2014 until telangana was formed across telangana we only had three government dialysis centers when we brought this uh, thing to the attention of our leader with one pen stroke he sanctioned 104 dialysis centers across telangana and we immediately gave free bus pass to all these dialysis patients we made sure that they got the most modern care in all these dialysis centers in where in, in 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 the most costliest of the private hospitals they reuse the machinery for dialysis but not in telangana government hospitals we do it a one time use and we take care of our patients and this has really earned a lot of goodwill for the government and the leader and um, of course uh, in every government we are giving uh, we, people try to give pensions but there is no reason or rhyme or the um 
positive effect of the pension that uh, you know the pension would ha give because in 2014 before 2014 when we saw there were various governments which were giving pensions starting from 70 rupees to 200 rupees to person which did not really make any difference in their lives so i gave a number here in 2014 there were pensions given to 29 lakh people but the rollout was only 861 crores per year this is per annum but in telangana government today we give pensions to 44 lakh 12882 people but the rollout is 11628 crores so unmatchable number amazing number which again creates a very positive impact in the lives of the people so this is this is the positivity that this government is bringing in and of course when we talk about education institutes we only wanted to see one result that at least 50% of the kids go to the government schools so we wanted to give a stiff competition to private schools and we did today this year 2023 50% of the kids are opting for government schools 50% of course are still going to the private institutions but then there are many numbers that i can give you um, the best number that i like we added 10000 medical uh, seats very fresh this year because in every district headquarters we wanted to put up a medical college and uh, before 2014 i can't even begin to tell you i'll just give you one number uh, for the backward classes across the state we had only 19 institutes next slide I think. 19 institutes but now we have 310 institutes for just the backward classes i'm saying and other numbers i have but then the number of students if you look at earlier it was addressing the governments were addressing 8000 now we are addressing and attending to 165610 students so these are the kind of numbers these are the kind of interventions that we are making i know uh, there's a lot of data and i can keep going but then i'll have to summarize uh, because we need to close by 8 uh, what i feel is the vision of kcr and this model transcends you know all economic matrices it just touches a human angle in governance um, and i i understand in economics we always talk about the scarcity uh, drives you to make certain choices we did have scarce resources when we became a state we were in dire condition we were in distress but the choices that we made led us in a very right way and we hung on uh, you know we held on to those choices and that is how we are able to create wealth today. And I believe a leader or a society should know how to harness the power of the raw resources that nature gives you into real wealth. I'll give you one example. Godavari River, Pranahita River was always there. It was there before KCR, it is there now, it will be there after KCR also. But the way KCR could build a largest world's largest lift irrigation project in three and a half years and could irrigate 73 lakh acres just within a period of three and a half years no other leader thought about no other government thought about so that is the difference i'm talking about how do we how do we as a society harness the raw power of the nature that bestows us and how do we convert it into real wealth so today whatever is grown in those 73 lakh acres that is the wealth of our state and that is how our GDP is growing. That is how we are growing as a, a nation. So, uh, well, the Telangana model, when we talk about the core of this model is to harness the existing resources that we have. And that I believe we've done wonderfully. And we are fighters. We fought for Telangana. We are fighters. We are fighting for the development of Telangana. And uh, there, are, there is a joke uh, in general about governance. They say if there is a bad government and you give them Sahara Desert, what happens is they'll create a scarcity of sand also. So that is bad governance. But when you want to look at a good governance, you should come to Telangana. I invite you, Professor Ji, please come to Telangana with your entire department. No, seriously look into what we have done. Um, tell us where we can improve or tell the world what is working for us. And uh, you can never get a better example than Telangana because we were under duress and distress. But then how we transformed the positive interventions that we've made. I only gave you some four or five examples that could be agriculture, that could be pensions, but there are many more. We almost have 252 programs that attend to you know, various sections and sectors of the 
population so i really do invite you please do come down and one of my very very favorite program is dalit bandhu program because it addresses to the most oppressed section of the society the idea is to uplift any dalit family out of the poverty line so there is a direct benefit transfer that is given and this is very this will be very interesting for you and economic students generally when government give away a loan even if it is 1 rupee there are 100 conditions with it this 1 rupee should be used in this particular way this 1 rupee should be used or you should show us how this 1 rupee is going to be paid back to us etc but this dalit bandhu program where we give 10 lakh rupees to a dalit family we gave them so much freedom we said if you want to use this 10 lakh to pay your debt pay it off all right from next day you start a fresh or you want to divide it into five units use 2 lakhs for this use 3 lakhs for that use 3 lakhs for this you are free to do so or four people who get dalit bandhu all of you can come together take 40 lakhs create a good industry with it do something else that freedom was given so we grounded these projects and the success rate that we are seeing the wealth the that the government could create for these families and the permanent upliftment of these families above the poverty line i believe uh, this is something very ground breaking no government has ever ever done it no government ever gave this kind of freedom to utilize the grant that is given to them and this is only telangana government that is given and that i can proudly say is the telangana model of governance and uh, ultimately when we look at uh, what all we have done we gave our society a confidence to you know pick and choose what they can do what they cannot do where they want to go if a person from a humble background wants to go study in uk we are giving them scholarships if they want to still continue with the traditional livelihood we give them help from the government we help them upskilling uh, today i am um, very proud to tell you that kids who have gone to do their iim iit the coming back and training with us because our government gives a uh, entrepreneurship program mentorship and finance to them so they coming back after iit iim to the telangana government training and we've trained more than 2500 people like that and we've created entrepreneurs so there are many many schemes i can go on and on i have a huge list but end of the day end of the day you know uh, under a decade of self rule and under the able leadership of a world class intellectual telangana is still you know recuperating realigning we are still rediscovering because the pain that we have gone through the suffering that we have gone through the decades of neglect that we have gone through the generational loss of opportunity to create wealth to become a different people and a society that we have lost we are still recuperating so we stabilized in this 10 years but this is our springboard now from here we will again you know jump back we will have to achieve much more now i can say we can dare to dream much bigger dreams than this and under the able leadership of kcr garu i believe we will continue to do so and uh, once again in the growth in the development of any state is the development of the nation india is also growing india will become much bigger and with leaders like kcr with models like telangana that can be applied universally to the nation to the world i'm sure we will grow as a country and we will be awesome amazing <laughs> thank you jai telangana jai bharat